Willie Bester, a South African-born multimedia artist, is the archaeologist of the art world. He is able to dig up pieces of the past that to any ordinary person is considered trash to invoke stories and emotions within the viewer. Through his art, he excavates memories of South Africa's history that were stored deep away and chips away at ideologies of the past. Besta paints, often on extremely rough surfaces like sacking or crushed tins, and makes large assemblages, cutting and welding together found materials from the junk shop and the street, and incorporating objects of all kinds in order to make layered comedy. Inspired by the hardships of the apartheid period, Besta embarks on a narrative journey through the construction of his work. The focus of this video is going to be about the anti-apartheid activist and hero Steve Biko, who, since his death in police custody on the 12th of September 1977, has become a martyr of the anti-apartheid movement. His death shortly after the Soweto uprisings served as a rallying point both internationally and locally for the anti-apartheid movement. In homage to Steve Biko, Besto uses found objects and imagery to narrate the story of Steve Biko's death. This is Steve Biko's story. On 18 August 1977, Biko was arrested at a police roadblock under the Terrorism Act No. 83 of 1967. He was interrogated by officers of the Port Elizabeth Security Police, including Harold Sleman and Gideon Newboat. This interrogation took place in Police Room 619. The interrogation lasted 22 hours and included torture and beatings resulting in a coma. He suffered a major head injury while in police custody and was chained to a window grill for a day. On 11 September 1977, police loaded him in the back of a Land Rover, naked and restrained in manacles, and began the 1,100 kilometer drive to Pretoria to take him to prison with hospital facilities. He was nearly dead owing to his previous injuries. He died shortly after arrival at Pretoria Prison on 12th September. The police claimed his death was the result of an extended hunger strike, but an autopsy revealed multiple bruises and abrasions and that he ultimately succumbed to a brain hemorrhage from massive injuries to his head, which many saw as strong evidence that he had been brutally beaten by his captors. 